what do you do when you're feeling a little lost? Not necessarily in a physical sense, but hey, if the shoe fits. I mean, what do you as a person do when you don't know what to do in your life? The future is hazy, every option you pick out seems to get worse and worse as you overthink and overthink. Reaching out for advice seems harder than anything. Insecurities have already taken over. It's this claustrophobic feeling that seems like it's never going to go away. When I face this problem, similarly to when I face most problems in my life, I turn to film for inspiration. A few days ago I turned to one of 2017 Sundance darlings, Columbus. The film centers around the two main characters of Jin, played by John Cho, and Casey, played by Haley Lou Richardson. Jin, a Korean native, has begrudgingly traveled to Columbus, Indiana to visit his dying father, who is a world-renowned architect. Casey is a Columbus local who loves architecture and lives with her mother, who's a recovering addict. One thing I need to talk about is medium specificity. It's a term used to describe how different artistic mediums have distinct properties. A medium is more specific when it works in a way that only it can. It's the way that paintings can be more painterly, a sculpture can be more sculptural, and so on. It's for when you see certain movie moments and realize that specific feeling could only be conveyed on film. It's a little hard to describe, but you know it when you see it. Columbus has a unique medium specificity in that it plays to two different mediums simultaneously throughout the movie. The absolute beauty of the titular city's modernist architecture is shown expertly through cinematographer Alicia Christian. The exteriors and interiors of some of these buildings are marvelous. Each frame, each shot could be studied. The visuals in this movie are spellbinding thanks in part to the medium specificity of architecture. But what happens when you center these architectural themes as the backdrop of a romantic drama? The medium specificity goes even deeper. This movie was expertly directed by a man named Kogonada. Columbus is actually this South Korean-born filmmaker's directorial debut. For years, and this is not going to surprise you, Kogonada has been creating video essays of some of cinema's most admired auteurs. He has relentlessly studied and obsessed over some of film's most critically acclaimed directors, like Stanley Kubrick and Robert Bresson. Kogonada's attention to detail pays off all throughout Columbus. One of my favorite moments in the film is when Jin and Casey initially meet. As Jin takes a phone call outside of his uniquely unmodernistic hotel, Casey hears him speaking Korean and grows interested. Initially, the two are separated not only by a fence, but by the awkward small talk of Casey introducing herself, being surprised that Jin could speak English, Jin correcting her assumption, and so on. The two begin to walk side by side, still divided by the fence. But as they begin to open up to one another, a break appears, and suddenly the two are right next to one another. The mood of the scene flips on its head, and instantly we see chemistry forming right in front of our eyes. That is how Kogonada not only uses the medium specificity of architecture, but he multiplies its artistic merit by blending in the unique properties of film. Columbus pays homage to Kogonada's favorite auteurs all throughout the film. In his video on Wes Anderson, for example, the focus is on symmetry. These mesmerizing symmetric frames can also be found throughout Columbus. Another video essay from Kogonada analyzes Yasuhiro Otsu and his passageways. The camera is stationary watching bystanders come and go on and off screen. Again, Columbus follows suit. We also see a nod to Ingmar Bergman's mirrors. And here's Columbus. And lastly, we see some reference to Otsu's pillow shots. A pillow shot is a cutaway for no obvious narrative reason to a visual element, often a landscape or an empty room that is held for a significant time. It can be at the start of a scene or during a scene. And here's Columbus. The 
the focus and precision of this video essayist turned director is shown throughout all these artistic tributes. He is not only paying respect to his elders and contemporaries, but evolving the art form as a whole. Not to say that Koganada's symmetry is better than Wes Anderson's or that his pillow shots are more effective than Otsu's, I just see it as brave to follow in the footsteps of your inspirations without ripping them off. The outline of Columbus is something we've seen a few times before. The concept of two very different people, both with troubles of their own, meeting and forming a distinct bond, has made some of my favorite movies of all time. Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy and Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation fit this same kind of mold. All these films, Columbus included, feature couples who are lost in life. There's key differences between them and their partner, but those differences help emphasize what needs fixing in the other. There's a comfort that these couples find in each other that they had previously been missing. The days they spend together are long and aimless even. In their regular lives before meeting each other, going to work, living a normal life is what made them feel lost in the world. But ironically, once they meet their match, they start to literally and physically get lost, wandering their environments together, and they finally find some meaning and purpose. Their personalities juxtapose one another so extremely well. There are key side characters who help propel the plot, and the movie eventually just stops feeling like a movie. In many of the movies I've watched, the thing I'm looking for is questions. Some good twists, vague endings, things that make you think and ponder life. Columbus, in many ways, feels like it's giving me answers. It's a calming, reassuring piece of art made with love and care that I promise will help inspire those that feel lost.